Okay, so let's let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is Mark Piller. Um, I'm the founder of the company, and today we're talking about uh, developing applications with Android and Web Orb. Uh, there is a there is a quick poll that I'd like to run just to gauge uh, the familiarity uh, with Android development. If you could quickly, uh, you know, pick pick the appropriate answer that cla classifies you your familiarity with Android development, so we would uh, we would know how to approach all the all the topics that we're going to cover in this particular webinar. Okay, so I see mo most of the people, based on the response, most of the people are either very new to Android development or have intermediate intermediate knowledge. Okay, fantastic. Uh, now, for the sake of time, I'm going to close this poll. That gives me a, a good idea. And uh, um, one more question, just so I can, uh, I, so I would know how to steer this webinar. If you could uh, select one of the two, uh, if you were to develop with Android, would it be either native Java or Adobe Air? I appreciate you taking the time to to participate in this poll. Cool. Okay. It's uh, just just so you know, it's interesting that uh, we have uh, uh, almost fifth, equally 50-50 split between Java, native Java, and Adobe Air. Cool. All right. I'm going to close this poll and let's just get started. So I have shared my screen. I have a, a very brief PowerPoint presentation just, just to kind of lay out all the content. And then I have a couple of demos that I'd like to show you, which will demonstrate everything that we have to offer for Android development. So, um, uh, so here, here's the main question: Why would anyone care about Web Orb when you develop with Android? Well, the the, the fact of the matter is, uh, Web Orb is a connectivity solution, and if you are building a client-server application uh, uh, for for the Android devices, uh, regardless whether it's an enterprise app or a game or any time you need to communicate with the server, there there's going to be a question as to how you can communicate. With with the server uh, and uh, Web Orb, over the time uh, we have made significant investment in supporting different service types uh, across the board in Java, .NET, PHP. Uh, you know, specifically with Java and .NET, there is a variety of different service types. You could have plain Java objects or .NET, .NET objects. You could have EJBs, WCF, Spring, Spring.NET. You name it. There is a there is a huge variety of those. And then what Web Orb does really well is it abstracts the, the, all, the, all the specific details that you might have with one or the other service model and provides uniform access, meaning that there is, there is just one simple interface that you can use to interact with the services of, exposed by Web Orb. So uh, when it comes to Android, it, it really is going to be the same problem. How do you integrate your enterprise Android app with your EGBs or web services or if it is not a, if it is let's say it's a game how do you integrate it with the server side just so you can execute server side methods uh, directly from your Android application so this is where web warp uh, comes in it provides this universal service access by making it very very easy to integrate your Android app regardless whether it's written in native Java application as a native Java app or as an Adobe Air app, and it provides this connectivity between your Android uh, device and the back end. So here you can see a list of the supported service types that you, you would be able to connect to from your Android application. Uh, so next, uh, in terms of uh, uh, levels of integration, so what I mentioned, uh, what I just mentioned was really remoting, being able to invoke service uh, server-side methods. Uh, the, another level of integration is messaging. Uh, and messaging is, is different than remoting because with messaging it's not just a matter of invoking methods, but it's, it's, it's a matter of passing messages around. Either where the messages can originate directly from your phone app and be sent to, to the server or to other clients, or the server may need to push messages directly into your uh, Android application. So Web Orb also provides, just like with remoting, very simple, easy to use APIs to be able to tap into the messaging infrastructures supported by Web Orb. 
And those include uh, things like JMS uh, for Java side, ActiveMQ or NMS, MSMQ on the .NET side. And there's also one that is built right into WebWorp that does not uh, uh, create any dependencies on any other messaging systems. So, th so this way you can very easily exchange data from bet between various uh, instances of your application uh, connected to uh, through WebWorp. Okay. Uh, there is also uh, RTMP support. So if you are coming from Flash, Flex background, uh, more than likely you are familiar with RTMP. Uh, and uh, if well, if you are building an and Android Air app, that really that functionality is built into Air uh, environment. If you are building a native uh, Java Android application. We're, we uh, we're providing support to do our, to establish RTMP connections directly from your Java application. So we provide an RTMP client that you can use inside of your Android app to connect to uh, to WebWorp and communicate with, let's say, well, other RTMP applications. So as far as the RTMP support, what we are going to be offering, uh, and that one is not available today. But, so, but it's, it's something that we will definitely be introducing very soon. Uh, that, that will include support for remote shared objects. Uh, you'll be able to uh, exchange data with other clients uh, connected to the, to the same messaging app. Uh, or you can do server-to-client invocation. So you will be able to invoke client-side functions in your Java app directly from your server-side code. And, and that will be applicable for WebWork for Java and WebWork for .NET. Uh, by the way, if, if you are not familiar with remote shared objects, it's a very powerful functionality. Uh, think of it as a, a specialized hash table or a hash map, however you, you'd like to look at it. Uh, and uh, uh, it has a name, and that, that hash table resides in the server side. Different clients can connect to that hash table and modify its state by setting or removing or uh, changing the properties. And whenever that change takes place, the server automatically broadcasts the change to all other connected clients. And you can do some very, very cool things just based on that simple concept. OK, so let's move on. Uh, on top of uh, remoting and messaging connectivity, we also provide developer productivity tools. And those are primarily uh, provided in the form of code generators. So as far as the code gen, uh, you'll be able to select any service that is deployed into WebWorp, regardless whether it's Pojo or Spring Bean or .NET class, or you name it, really anything that is supported. And when, when you select that service, uh, our code generator for Android will kick in, and we'll be able to provide you uh, a library, uh, 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 either in, uh, as in the form of an Air app or a native Java app, and also a sample, sample application that demonstrates how to use that library. So you can just deploy it right, right into an emulator or device and see, see that library in action and use it as a, as a reference implementation. Uh, for messaging, uh, and I will demonstrate this today, we also provide monitoring tools. So if you're doing a publish subscribe implementation, regardless whether it's with Air or whether it's native Java, you'll be able to tap into that messaging infrastructure directly from our console and see the messages that are flowing through that, that those messaging destinations or channels uh, and, and really see you know what 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 kind of data the clients are are sending around, okay? And as I said, uh, the support extends for uh, native Java and Adobe Air applications. Now, by the way, as I go, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, to uh, post them here. I'll be periodically checking uh, questions. In fact, let me open this up. Okay, cool. So uh, let's continue. All right, so let's talk about the actual API. Uh, so there are two different APIs, d depending whether you use uh, native Java or you use Air. Okay, so for native Java API, it really boils down to just single class that gives you the connectivity with the backend. Uh, from the deployment perspective, uh, you would need to include webwarp.jar, uh, and we're working on trimming it down, just creating webwarp client.jar, which would be fairly small. Uh, and, uh, uh, and you can you can see an example of the API right there. Uh, so you basically create an instance of the WebWorp client class. You specify the URL of where your WebWorp, uh, either Java or .NET or PHP, is running. And then there is this you know invoke method where you can specify the name of the class, 
name of the method, pass in arguments, and pass in a responder object, which will contain the callback methods. And, and that's pretty much it. So here, where you see uh, com.foo.myService, here is the name of the class with the package or namespace names. But it can be really any identifier of your service. So if, you're, if you want to invoke a method on EJB, or here you would put your GNDI name. Or if you want to invoke a method on a, on a SOAP web service, here you can put just the WSDL URL. And WebWorp will take care of the actual invocation. It will go out to that web service, invoke the method, and deliver the result back to the client. Okay? Now, uh, I also would like to note that the actual uh, protocol uh, on the wire protocol between your Android application and, and the web warp is, is the binary protocol over uh, HTTP. It is the same protocol that Flex and Flash clients use it. It's called AMF. Highly optimized, very compact. Uh, so it is really ideal for, for mobile environments. Okay, I see there's a bunch of questions, so let me quickly take a look if there is something that I can answer right now. All right, so there is a question if we're planning on doing an iOS implementation. Yes, absolutely. Actually, the, this work has started. And uh, uh, pretty much everything that I have uh, mentioned so far related to Android would be equally applicable to iOS. So it's going to be remoting support uh, and actually our TMP support. Uh, uh, there is a question if I can provide differences between lifecycle versus web warp. I can definitely do that. In fact, we should probably do a whole webinar on this. But let's take, I'd like to take this question towards the end after I cover everything that I wanted to show you and then, uh, and then talk about that. Uh, question, uh, are there plans to support monodroid or mono for Android? It would be great to have a complete .NET solution for building Android apps. Uh, to tell you the truth, this, this is the first time I hear about mono for Android, but it's something that I'll, uh, we'll be looking into it. I know we, in the, in the, in the uh, latest version of WebWorp for Java, and actually WebWorp for .NET, we're, we're, we're adding code generators that will give you a, a mono developer project uh, for your service that you can just run and uh, have the uh, Moonlight uh, application running in the browser uh, directly out of the box. So that's, that's happening. So as far as the monodroid, it's definitely, uh, we, will, we'll, we will look into that. OK. So there is a question if you can use Java classes on Android and .NET in the server side. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the key thing is that on, on the Android, uh, you can use Air or, or native Java or, well, we'll look into this monodroid thing. But at this point, you know, we're focused on native Java and Air. And on the server side, you can use anything that we support. And that includes web or for Java, web or for .NET, and web or for PHP. So, so this way, you can kind of visualize the matrix and connectivity between, uh, you know, your Android app and the back end. Okay. All right. So these are these are the questions that that we have so far. Let's continue with this presentation and then move on to to the actual demo. All right. So here, uh, that was the example of using just the using the native Java API to do the remoting invocations. Okay. So as far as the Air client, it's the standard thing. Uh, using the remote object MXML or API, I'm sure you're familiar with it. So there's really nothing new that you need to do uh, differently uh, in the Air application. So it's it's going to be exactly the same thing. The the only thing that you need to keep in mind, and I will I will demonstrate that today, is that uh, since since it is an Air application, the actual endpoint URL that the Air app running on Android needs to use it needs to be uh, an absolute URL. You cannot use relative URL because those will not be resolved. So you will need to con do the proper configuration just so your your remoting destinations or messaging messaging destinations are explicitly defined and are absolute URLs. 